Hi, it's Ileana here, and today I am going to be talking about Neuralink technology and nanotechnology. I in no way endorse uh, the manufacturing or production of, of the Neuralink implants, which is the nanotech that's produced on Mars to implant in humanoid brains that increases telepathy, that increases your access to um, downloading and uploading information into the Neuralink implant that goes into your brain. So I don't endorse that. That's been done on Mars uh, in the cybernetics labs. That is something that I was involved in the production of those technologies, but I don't endorse that. Uh, and I'm not part of manufacturing that right now. Uh, but what's going on on Earth is that nanotechnology is evolving and being developed to create nano robots that will eventually, in about 10 years time, will be put into our bloodstream, which will help to heal diseases and wounds um, by connecting to the autoimmune system and the immune system and central nervous system in our bodies, that these um, nano robots will be able to heal the body. That's what the claim is in an article. So I'm just going to discuss that article and what's all that about. Because again, I'm not promoting nanotechnology and the use of it, but I've been talking about Neuralink implants and um, nanotechnology and nanites since the beginning of all my presentations, warning people of what's to come. And uh, this is coming in 2030 according to the article. So again, I'm just reporting on this and what's coming down the road uh, because some of this nanotechnology that's been utilized on Mars is coming down the pipeline to Earth. Um, in the 2030s, it'll be the nano robotic uh, little uh, nanobi non nanobots that will go into our bloodstream. And in 2050s, it'll be the um, biological human cyborgs that uh, will be starting to do the Neuralink implants and other um, nanotechnology augments for the human body, eventually creating biological human cyborgs. So I'm just going to discuss the uh, nanobots today and what that technology will look like by 2030. So this is the nanobots will be flowing through your body by 2030 article, the nanotechnology that I'm talking about. And it says in 10 years, nanobots in your blood, in your blood might keep you from getting sick or even transmit your thoughts to a wireless cloud. So synthetic telepathy. That's something my Neuralink implants were able to do to connect with holographic databases, to navigate ships remotely, and to telepathically talk to other SSP assets who had the Neuralink implants. But this is nanobots going in your bloodstream, not Neuralink implants. So this is what these things will look like going down into your bloodstream. According to some futurists, in the next 10 or so years, your blood could be streaming with tiny nano robots to help keep you from getting sick or even transmit your thoughts to a wireless cloud. They will travel inside of you on a molecular level, protecting your biological system and ensuring that you'll have a good and long life. The future is closer than you may think. Nano as a term is no longer perceived as special, we got used to small devices and artificial intelligence in our daily life. Tech has developed significantly and so have potential applications of these microscopic machines. Futuristic and Google, Futurist and Google Director of Engineering, Ray Kurzweil, is an avid predictor of future events and claims to have a fairly high accuracy rate. So this is a futurist and he's a Google director. He is one of the biggest proponents of the notion that nano, nanobots will be streaming through our blood in the near future. The science surrounding this prediction may not be that far off from modern technology. We already have the modern technology. We, we have this modern technology on Mars and so much more. Nanobots injected into your bloodstream. 
according to IFL science, DNA robots are, are already being tested in animals to seek out and destroy cancer cells. These programmed strands of DNA have the capability to move through the bloodstream and injecting blood clotting drugs into blood vessels around tumors, cutting off their blood supply. So this, this is already in the testing field, some of this tech. If human trials go forward, these tiny robots could be rev revolutionary in treating cancer and other cell research. There are still a large number of hurdles to overcome, however, before in injected nanorobots would be able to surpass current forms of treatment. So they're saying there's some hurdles to this tech. There's no hurdles on Mars to this. The Neuralink implants and the nanite tech is already being implemented on SSB assets and soldiers. Cancer detection and treatment is one thing, but tiny nanobots could be big players in the future of medicine for other reasons. Researchers believe that nanobots could soon deliver drugs to humans with a high degree of accuracy, according to New Atlas. This would allow for delivery of microdosages right where the patient needs them. It could help prevent harmful side effects. University scientists also believe that nanobots could one day be used to reduce plaque in veins and solve dietary issues along with a whole slew of other medical uses. Extending beyond simple medicine, nanobots could allow humans to reach a greater state of connectivity. In research published in Science Mag, scientists with the Weiss Institute for Biologically Inspired Engineering and Department of Genetics at Harvard Medical School stated this, as a proof of principle, nanorobots nano loaded with combinations of antibody fragments were used in two different types of cell signaling stimulation in tissue culture. Our prototype could, inspi could inspire new designs with different selectivities and biologically active payloads for cell targeting tasks. Theoretically, nanobots could one day be used to constantly monitor our body for maladies and other symptoms constantly transmitting this information to a cloud for close monitoring by medical staff. This could essentially turn the common cold or other types of conditions into easily stoppable problems. Related, how has nanotechnology changed over the years? The idea that nanobots could one day transmit our thoughts to the cloud is probably the most far-fetched of the many proposed uses for nanobots out there. This feat would require great strides in both neuroscience and nanorobotics, along with a population willing to give Google direct access to our brains. While it may be a possibility, this functionality is probably a long way off in the future. Uh, with the Neuralink implants on Mars, um, it's not a long way off, it's already been done. Uh, synthetic telepathy is the primary functions of the Neuralink implants. So taking a step back for a moment, let's discuss what nanotechnology really is. What is nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is more than just technology for sci-fi villains. It's a burgeoning field melding engineering and science. Nanorobotics refers to the emerging field of designing and building robots whose components are near the scale of a nanometer, 10 minus X meters, or ranging in size from 0, 1 to 10 micrometers, and made of nanoscale or molecular components. So this is the di diagram, the nanoscale in neuromaterials and nanomaterials, I guess. That's the uh, molecular components and nanoscale what they're discussing. A scale of nanotechnology, so that's the scale of nanotechnology matched up with other understandable objects. So that's what the comparison is. For comparison, one nanometer is about equivalent to 10 times the size of a single atom and 10 times smaller than the width of your DNA. Where nanotechnology began, Nanotechnology has actually been around for some time too. 
some point to the field beginning with Nobel laureate Richard Feynman, who gave a talk called There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom to a group of physicists at the American Physical Society meeting at Caltech in 1959. Feynman, who is often referred to as the father of nanotechnology, described a theoretical process in his talk that, will, that would allow researchers to be able to manipulate singular atoms or singular molecules. This process, which wasn't invented yet, would eventually become the core application of nanoscience. Related, learn like an engineer using the Fenman technique. It wasn't until 1981 that microscopes were developed that were even able to see individual atoms. These early scanning tunneling microscopes achieved a level of precision and magnification that hadn't been seen before. By allowing researchers to image individual atoms, they gave a boost to the idea that nanotechnology was possible. And so there's control voltage for piezo tubes, piezoelectric tube with electrodes, tunneling current amplifier, distance control and scanning unit. Uh, so it does check for tunneling voltage and data processing in this place. Those, that's what, um, this is a schematic diagram of how a scanning tunneling microscope works. And it describes nanotechnology in the future. Based on all of this, a host of very real challenges are still ahead of us. And before we can start using nanorobots, additional development is necessary. Nanorobots and nanotech is already being done on Mars. This is technology that has been around on Mars for 80 to 100 years now. Some researchers predict that it will take around 10 years to surmount these challenges to begin using nanobots for some types of surgery. However, others are not sure that this is the best use of limited health care money. Robot assisted surgery is already more expensive than traditional methods and nanorobotics is likely to be equally expensive, at least in the short to medium term. As for Kurzweil, he is convinced that nanotechnology holds out the promise of someday merging humans and technology. In 2019, he told Engadget the following. The scenario that I have is that we will send medical nanorobots into your bloodstream. One application of these medical nanorobots will be to extend our immune systems. These robots will also go into the brain and provide virtual and augmented reality from within the nervous system rather than from devices attached to the outside of our, of our bodies. The most important application of the medical nanorobots is that we will connect the top layers of our neurocortex to synthetic neurocortex in the cloud. So synthetic telepathy and downloads and uploads of information. If nanobot injection becomes an option, will you volunteer to take the first steps to becoming a cyborg? Are you open to this kind of change? So that's the last quote of what he says. Uh, been there, done that with the Neuralink implants that actually actually mal malfunctioned in my brain. So I'm not looking forward to this. But uh, just to be aware, I am reporting on the info of what this is and uh, what's in the pipeline for 2030 and what's coming to us because this tech will come to us. It'll be part of the medical system and eventually part of uh, neuroscience and nanotechnology. It's coming down the road. So this, this, is, this is coming. Um, it's to be expected. And again, I'm not a proponent of it. I'm not endorsing it. I'm simply, I'm simply reporting on the fact that nanotechnology is already here and it might come in the nano form of nanorobots that are supposed to make us more healthier and create synthetic telepathy and, con and connect with cloud technology as well. So I just wanted to share that with everyone that this is coming down the pipeline and um, 
it's it's already here in some form of production.